Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to be doing another video in my eyeshadow palette week. And today we are talking about eyeshadow palettes that I think were almost perfect. And many of these I therefore didn't buy because these color stories or just something about this palette I felt was lacking. So let's get started. Welcome if you're new here, welcome if you're a returning visitor, thank you so very much for being here today. I greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch another one of my videos. I love chatting about eyeshadow palettes, in case you didn't know, that's why we're in the midst of eyeshadow palette week. And I also really like talking about Essence and Catrice products on here, but I also really like getting the use out of my products, which is why I like doing these sort of like themed videos where I can look back at what once was and perhaps try some of the things that I know I love and adore. Um, but today's video is going to be a slightly different take. I hope it's not going to be too ranty or negative for you. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to chat about eyeshadow palettes where I felt that if one thing about it had been different, that it would have been the perfect palette for me. So I've got 10 palettes that I've selected here today, but only three of these were in my makeup collection. And I say were because all three of these ended up on the declutter pile when I last decluttered my eyeshadow palette collection. And the other seven I will be mentioning, I've never even purchased precisely because I was like, mm, I'm not entirely sure. Also, it's, if halfway through this week my hair suddenly changed, that's because I'm pre-filming these videos and I did get myself a haircut. <laughs> um, in between filming these videos, yeah. If it suddenly looks differently again, and that's why. So today we are chatting about these eyeshadow palettes, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to mention, because I, I think I'm pretty sure that if you know anything about my makeup references, it's going to be a surprise to know that I do not own the Huda Beauty New Nude. I'll pop a picture up here. Um, the Huda Beauty New Nude was a palette when it was announced. I was greatly intrigued by it. I enjoy the Huda Beauty formula. I already know that. I have quite a few of her, of her palettes. I have three of the larger palette, palettes and a bunch of the obsessions, like mini palettes that she does. So you may be wondering why someone who claims to love rosy, mauve-toned eyeshadow palettes doesn't own the Huda Beauty New Nude. And that's actually for more than one reason, and it's not the color story, but the new nude was released when Huda Beauty insisted on putting textured shadows in her eyeshadow palettes. It's the reason why I didn't buy her, what was it called, the original Huda Beauty palette, like the first one that she then remastered. Um, that also had like pressed glitters, and the reason why I settled on the Desert Dusk as my first Huda Beauty palette at the time was because it only had one pressed glitter. And I believe the Huda Beauty New Nude has like, what, two or three pressed glitters out of an 18 pen eyeshadow palette. And in the bottom row, in the left hand co corner, there is a shade that looks like to be a cream colored eyeshadow, but it's actually a base. And it is therefore also a cream formula that is supposed to be used as a first step in your makeup routine. So it's not even like a proper, proper shadow. It doesn't have a lid to cover it, so any shadow, any fallout can drop into this pan. And I'm just not a huge fan of that. So out of an 18 pan palette, there were three or four shades that I already knew I wasn't going to get the use out of. And then when I had a look at this actually in store and I did some swatches, a lot of the shades that really stood out to me as being more unique in my very extensive rosy, rosy mauve toned eyeshadow palette family, you could say. Um, I felt that a lot of the shades that made it stand out were part of the glitter formula. So for me, in the end, it just wasn't offering me anything unique and I already knew I didn't like pressed glitters. And with how expensive Huda Beauty is and it not going on sale very often where I live, I just knew that it wasn't going to be worth it. So for me, the Huda Beauty New Nude is just one I never purchased. Speaking of press colors, I can also segue into number two, which is the ABH Norvina Mini Volume 3. This is the one with the cherry covers. And I mean, just for the cover and the box, you would like to own this palette. It's just that one gripe that I had with this palette wasn't necessarily what we got inside. I mean, it looks really, really pretty and I had a lot of fun playing with this. 
but there are two shades in this palette that nowhere on the packaging did it say that they were pressed glitters. They are called pressed pigments by the brand, but both of these shimmers have so much texture to them, they feel so gritty, that without using a glitter glue, they just won't stick down. And to me, that, that, was, that is what defines a glitter for me, is do I need a sticky base to make it stick? I don't use a glitter glue with any shimmers because I feel that a regular shimmer will stick down. Sometimes you need your finger to warm it up. Um, the shade I'm actually wearing today, I'm wearing a Pat McGrath uh, quad. Her, uh, I always call it the Fleur Vixen. It's not called that. It's called the Venus and Fleurs Voyeuristic Vixen. I'm learning. I'm learning. And that also has a very textured, almost flaky kind of shimmer that with a brush, doesn't really look like it does it's going to do too much but what i like to do is to then use my brush go in with one layer use my finger for a second layer and if it still doesn't look very intense i will go back in with my brush again but then i like to go in with a wet brush so i like to go in steps to really get like full opacity and i always double prime my lids to make sure a my eyeshadow does increase and that too i get true color payoff so that's why I sort of have a couple of things already in play that I like to do to get the most out of my makeup. And with these, I definitely need that glitter primer to really stick them down, especially this very pretty iridescent looking pinky shade. In the pan, it looks like such a stunning shimmer. And this, if this had been an actual shimmer formula, I would have loved this palette because you get some really unique things and you might think, aren't those a lot of like pinks and reds? But actually, because you get the blue, you can very easily turn them into purpley shades because the pinks and the, pur and the blue and also the reds will of course blend into a purple if you are very careful. So this is just a really good way to be more creative and I had a lot of fun playing with this. But the fact that this one especially is so gritty and it doesn't list it anywhere as being an actual pressed glitter, even though in my experience it was, I just felt that this was a palette that was left a little lacking in my, in my opinion, and I just wanted a little bit more from it. The third palette I want to mention here is the Annette Makeup's Corner collab with Menagerie Cosmetics. When I heard that Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner was going to do a collab, I think this was the first one she announced. I was just so happy for her. I like watching a lot of her videos. I love her channel. And to see her be able to do a collab with one of her favorite brands had me super excited. I believe the palette was called the Serendipity Palette. It's no longer available. You can no longer buy this. But then I saw the color story and I, I, I mean, this is Annette's color story too, truth be told. So it's not necessarily my color story because me and Annette, we do have very different makeup tastes when it comes to what we look for. But I like hearing people give different opinions from my own because that helps me to learn about makeup. But with this palette, even though I love Menagerie's formula, I have quite a few of their palettes. I'm considering buying more as we are, uh, as I'm filming this video, I'm sort of still umming and ahhing whether I should get their new Sugar High palette. And for me, the serendipity, what really threw me off was the yellow and the orange that this has. So it had a very strong orange shimmer and me and orange, we just don't go together. Like my undertone is more cool toned. I lean, I'm actually more like neutral so I can get away with a lot, but the minute things go very, very warm toned and oranges usually do this for me, I can no longer pull it up. There's just something about very many shades of orange that it just doesn't look right on me. I have found a couple of orange colored clothing items in the past couple of weeks because orange seems to be the color of the moment. So I did find myself a couple of things that do look right on me and I think it has to do with my hair color that it still goes. But in terms of like what I put around my eyes, orange and also things like yellow tone golds and very vibrant like sunflower yellow shades which was also featured in this palette they're just not really my vibe and they are not things that i go into and it's just not something i reach for so especially because this palette seemed to be centered around those kind of shades i decided to pass up on this one now number four is a palette that i thought i was going to buy at first which was the lunar beauty moon spell number two i never got the moon spell number one even though it got a lot of hype 
I felt those shades I already had in my collection, so even though it looked like a really cool color story, I thought that I didn't really need it because the Moonspell one was just a little too samey samey, I felt to, you know, if I compared it to things I already had. The Moonspell 2 looked to be a lot more unique to me, especially because it has like these warm tones with, I believe, some purples. That, that was the concept here. And I really liked the look of it. But then when I really started seeing people using this and I start seeing more swatches, I realized that it's very, very monochromatic. Now, in case you don't know anything about me, but you should know that I pretty much reorganized every single Colourpop palette that I had that was more of a monochromatic color story. So for me, if things are too much of a similar color, I feel I'm very limited in the looks that I can do. And then, like with the Huda Beauty, I feel that Lunar Beauty is a little bit too expensive to really buy into it. I have a Lunar Beauty palette. In fact, it's sitting right next to me right now because it's going to be featured in another video that I'll be filming in a minute. Uh, so the Lunar Beauty Eternal Eclipse, I remember this being launched and I knew I had to sw snatch it up. But with the Moon Spell 2, I held off because I wasn't entirely sure when it was announced. And then as I saw people playing around with it, I was like, nah, this would not stand the test of time in my makeup collection. So I'm glad I didn't buy it in the end. Number five on the list is a palette that I do have, and I've always kept the box because I like the box better than the actual palette. And this is a similar reason to the ABH palette I just showed you. This is the ColourPop Animal Crossing Nuke Ink eyeshadow palette. And I, this was when ColourPop started doing these four pans, and I bought a bunch of them just to try them out from different collections. So this is the only one from the Animal Crossing line I got. And I kind of bought this because Betty Bean from... Um, her, she was like hyping up this collection quite a bit and she said that this was her favorite one and I like a good green look on myself so I decided to pick this up. But what I didn't know, because this just looks like a really stunning shimmer, that again it is an actual pressed glitter. It's not smooth. Some of these like uh, ColourPop uh, like four pans that have the clear packaging also have a shimmer that is a little bit more textured, but they are a metallic foiled base with a bit of sparkle in it, so it's not a full-on pressed glitter where there's very little color base to it. I feel those still have a colored base, so I feel I don't have to pack them on and really lose a, use a glitter glue with them to really make them work. Um, even if you wear contact lenses, you may still be very careful with those ones as well. But with this, I just, I just don't like running the risk of getting these things in my eyes. So even though I really like those other three shades, I just wish this was an actual metallic shimmer. And then I would have loved this. I would have been praising it into the high heavens. But just because it has that one pressed glitter, I just couldn't get down. Next up is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension eyeshadow palette. And I'm particularly mentioning this palette because there are a few things about this palette that I really, really like, and that's mainly the packaging. It's just that the color story with the uh, two creams on one side and then everything being very monochromatic browns, which most of them are very warm toned, so it would have really worked for me, I think. Um, it just wasn't really my vibe, but I think that the concept of this palette is incredibly intriguing. And now, of course, I think it's already out in the US. He has come out with like a rosy tone version of this palette, and that is on the wish list because I'm like, oh boy, this is, every this is what I wanted that first palette to be. So for me, the major dimension, because it is a lot of warm tone browns, I just know I cannot get down with that, and especially because it's like, what, 12 shades, 14 shades? It's just, I would never get to use out of all of those shades, but hey, if it's, you know, more rosy toned, I might. I'm still a little on the fence because Patrick Ta is another one of those brands where I feel a lot of the products skew very warm toned, so I'm not sure how perfect it is for a cool to neutral undertone, however, I do think that Patrick Ta is sold in French Sephora, and I will be traveling to France towards the end of the month. So I hope to be able to spot the brand in store, and maybe they already have the palette, and I could actually have a look at it, because I do feel very often, if I'm not sure about undertones, it's just so helpful to see something in real life. And with, you know, the availability of Patrick Ta in Europe being so limited, I think it's called Beauty and French Sephora where you can buy this, um, it's just not very easy to, like, be able to see it and then get a feel for the product 
and then you know do some swatches and see if you might like it but yeah i like the concept of this with the row of mattes and the row of shimmers those two creams that do have the flap i love it i love the packaging i love this rectangular packaging actually so for me the major dimension in terms of undertones just wasn't great which is why i didn't pick it up um but that rosy tone version he's come out with is very much on my street Number seven is the ABH Primrose eyeshadow palette. So ABH is on here twice, but the other one was from the Norvina line, so I don't really mind. Um, but the Primrose palette was one where I was like, ooh, that was an Anastasia Beverly Hills palette, which was the first time they've launched something new since, what, I'm Razy, which was like two, two years ago or so. So I was really happy to see this. I thought that the palette itself was very pretty, um, but I felt that the shades in the eyeshadows were like a mix of Modern Renaissance and Soft Glam, and I already have both of those palettes. I don't feel that mine, even though they are a bit old, have expired yet. My shades still blend well, work well, look great, feel great, smell great. So I could get the look of this palette if I use those two palettes already. That being said, there's another reason why I didn't pick this up, and that's the fact that the Primrose comes with cheek products. Now, I have another palette from Urban Decay, the Back Talk, that has both eyeshadows and cheek products, and there I really feel that the cheek products can be used as eyeshadows to complement the shades in the eyeshadow palette. So I could have done that here as well, but I just know that the cheek products in this palette are far too deep for me, and they wouldn't really work. They are quite orange leaning. So for my complexion, even though the eyeshadows might work and the cheek products might work as eyeshadows on me, um, I just know I wouldn't get the use out of this product. I don't get that much use out of my Backtalk palette either, to be quite fair. So for me, I, I just don't think that combining cheek and eyeshadow palette or eyeshadow products in one palette is really where it's at for me. I would not get the use out of it especially because the cheek products aren't perfect. So I said there were going to be three declutter palettes in today's video. Well, actually there's four. Uh, the Vizier Dark Edit is one that I've already talked about, I believe this month. And the reason why this wasn't perfect for me, like why this was a bit of a letdown, was because I didn't really get a lot of mattes to go with these more colorful shades. I feel that if, if this top row had had a little bit more variety, that I would have liked this a little bit more. Also, the matte to shimmer ratio in this palette isn't ideal for me. I love having an equal to <laughs> even more shimmers than mattes in my palettes because I'm just a shimmer girl at heart. I don't mind putting a shimmer in the crease. I really don't. I like doing that from time to time. But yeah, here we get four warm toned neutral shades. And so for me, it's like this is the palette really and then these two shades i also don't really like so i like about half the palette and the other half i'm just not a big fan of can i use these shades of course of course i can but i wish it had had a little bit more variety that these were also perhaps you know that there was a bit more of a cool tone in there and then we got some other shimmers that would have been lovely so yeah the dark edit just wasn't perfect for me and then the other palette that was in my decluttering pile is this one. This is the Nabla Cutie Metro Metropolitan Eyeshadow Palette. And this one is really, really pretty at face value. Like at first glance, this looks so stunning. But for me, this color story just didn't really come together, mainly because this white shade has a bit of a blue flip. So it's quite cool toned compared to everything that's going on here that is quite warm toned. I'm not a huge fan of yellow tone golds, I already mentioned that, and this coral just, it didn't really do much for my complexion. So this would be my favorite shade together with those two. So again, half the palette I like, the other half I don't. I feel that if this had more of a champagne to it, that it would have rounded out the palette a little bit better, but now I feel it kind of like stands alone and you're like, what should I do with that? So yeah, does it have a couple of really pretty shades? sure but if you're like me and you have a fair skin tone that leans more cool to neutral then maybe this isn't your color story so this is definitely one that will work for some people but not for everyone and finally i have to mention another palette i don't own and that's the natasha denona metropolis mini palette so the large metropolis palette was never really my cup of tea it had so many warm tones and for how expensive it was i just knew like if I'm only going to be using like five shades from this palette, 
it's not going to be worth it. So that's why with the Natasha Denona Metropolis Mini, when that was launched, I was quite excited because it has this really pretty teal and I love myself a teal eyeshadow. So that's why this palette definitely sort of spoke to me. But then I looked at the kind of mattes we got and how many warm tones. And again, here it all comes down to the undertone of these shades and how I predict it will be coming together on my skin tone, which is going to be not that flattering and not as versatile as some of the other mini palettes that I, for instance, did buy, like the mini Retro and the mini Love. Those I have, those I really like. I really like Natasha Denona quality, but I just knew that the way this was laid out and with how many mattes and shimmers we got, that I just wasn't going to get the use out of it, so that's why I passed up on this one. So that's it. Those were the 10 eyeshadow palettes that I wanted to mention in terms of, you know, these are really lovely. I almost bit the bullet or I actually bit the bullet on them and I tried them and it was just a little bit lacking either because of a formula, glitters that I just wasn't a fan of, or because I didn't like the matte to shimmer ratio, or because the color story just didn't look or didn't really work for me. So that's, that's usually the reasons why things don't end up working for me, you know? So yeah, let me know in a comment down below what were some palettes that you thought were almost perfect, but not quite. Like if we tweaked it a little bit, these would have been so much better. I would be very curious to hear about that. For now, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, that would very much help me out here. Uh, if you would like to subscribe to the channel so that you can stay on top of when I post new videos, that would be lovely too. I typically post three times a week, but in April, because of Eyeshadow Palette Week, I'm doing a couple of extra videos as well. So if you would like to stay tuned for more, and then I hope to see you in my next one. Bye for now. Take care.